Well, hello folks, welcome back. Uh, this is the last part of session six, and we're going to talk about gener generalized linear models for the, uh, that is an extension for the exponential uh, family, okay? So in this part, we're going to consider this particular form over here, in which the probability of a given sample depends on the parameters, and this this uh, distribution is the expected is the exponent exponential of the y i times the parameter minus some a a function a of the parameters. So this is as you see the exponential form, right? In which we have the data and the parameter and the equivalent function over here, and we also have some function with respect of the data and the, and the dispersion parameter that we are adding to this particular expression over here. And in this general, generalized form, we are going to consider two types of parameters, the mean parameters that we were working with and what we call some natural parameter. And what happens inside of this thing over here is that we have some way of moving back and forward between these uh, representations. So we can go from the data through uh, what we call a mean function that is just the inverse of this link function and allows us to go from the data to the mean parameter and we also have a way from going to the mean parameter up all the way to the to the theta parameter all the or the natural parameter if you want so if we pl plug this into into our uh, original shape we end up with this particular form and these are the type of, of things that we are looking for um, we are going to be working with uh, the data and we are going to move through this data uh, using the, this mean function over here. So the mean function just replaces these parameters that we have at the beginning and we maintain the same, the same particular shape. And these generalized linear models are actually very helpful because we can use them for several tasks. For instance, um, within our Bernoulli distribution, we just take this likelihood and just change this, uh, wait, wait, sorry, uh, no, not this one, <laughs> it's uh, this, uh, linear regression over here. So if we take the linear regression, this, this is actually the, the, the shape. So if we take the linear regression and we just put it in that particular shape, then we get a, a linear model, right? It's linear with respect of the parameters and we can just um, take back this shape and put it in, in terms of the parameters that we have. So if you just uh, spread this uh, linear regression that we had before, and you start seeing, for instance, like our theta i is equal, is equal to the mu i that is equal uh, to the WTXI uh, product. And our uh, cumulant function becomes this uh, theta square that we have over 2. So that is this, this shape of, over here. And from here, we can use that, that information to also compute the... Um, the first and second moment, okay? Another example that we can see is, for instance, binomial regression, in which if we spread out the, the binomial, we can try to find which are the, the particular terms that represent that generalized linear model. So we can see that our parameter, for instance, uh, pi, it is, is just, pi i is just the sigma of my, of my WTXI, and this is my, my, mean, my mean parameter. And I can move back through this using uh, the log function. So this becomes my, um, my link function to go from these mean, mean parameters to my natural parameter. And based on that, I can use it to, to obtain my, um, my A, my cumulant function, as this Ni log of one minus Pi over here. And again, I can use this cumulant function to compute the first and second moment of my data. So it is really handy to, to avoid doing uh, complex computations once we have the normal form. And we can use this, for instance, to compute the maximum likelihood estimator. We can just simply take that particular form and push it into this um, log, uh, log likelihood. And using this log likelihood, we can simply uh, compute the chain rule, for instance. And I can take this log likelihood and, and simply apply the, the chain rule with respect of WJ. 
and then just move through the the defined um, shapes through the defined functions, right? And my L with respect to WJ, I just apply the chain rule, and this is L with respect of theta, theta with respect of mu, mu with respect of eta, and eta with respect of W, right? And then we just simply compute those things. So in this case, we haven't defined what, what theta and mu are, but it doesn't matter because we can leave them implicit over here and simply compute what we know, in this case, the L and the eta, right? Because eta is the WT transpose, uh, sorry, W transpose X, right? And we just get this derivative is just my yi and the derivative of the of the cumulant that is just the mu i because it is what like my mean parameter over here right and this just multiplies this this particular function so if we assume for instance that um, the natural and the and the mean are equal, so I have an identity function, we end up with a similar response to what we had before in this uh, in this type of regressors, right? And then once we have this gradient, we can just apply it and plug it in, in our favorite gradient descent algorithm and simply use it, or use it to compute the, the Haitian, for instance. And then we can just push it into these iteratively weighted least squares and just apply the same algorithms that we were using before. And the difference is that these terms over here, my spread matrices, they are just in terms with, re with respect of these uh, cumulant functions and mean and link functions, right? So for instance, my set here uh, is just the, the update of the parameter with respect of, of my theta. And my theta is just my x, w, right? And my mu is just the, the inverse of my link function, right? Like it is my, my mean function over here. So when I have these defined in, in the general form, we have a way of simply uh, addressing those kind of things. So I won't cover the, the rest of the examples that appear in the chapter, but I highly um, uh, encourage you guys to, to go and check these, these other examples on, of the rest of the chapter, because you can get a, a really nice idea from it, okay? So that's it for the exponential family. And if you have any doubts, just hit me in, in, the, in the classroom, okay?